soprano say with Jesus. With Jesus. With Jesus. With Jesus. Oh, to say run with Jesus. I'm on my way. Jesus, I'm on my way. Run with 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 Jesus, I'm on my way. Jesus brought me up, turn my life around. Jesus brought me up, turn my life around. Jesus brought me up, turn my life around. Somebody give God a praise. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. Now, I'm on my way. Remain standing with us a little while. Remain standing a little while, everybody. Stand with us, please. Stand with us. Amen. Whew. I'm tired. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we are at the point where we will be hearing a word from the Lord. Amen. Our speaker on tonight is no stranger to us here at Bethany Apostolic Fellowship Center. Praise God. Amen. One. Amen. My friend and brother and the Lord Jesus Amen. Coming from a mighty long way. Amen. Growing in the Lord, growing in faith. Praise the Lord Jesus. And uh, as the Lord would see fit, he elevated to a higher degree of service. Amen. Amen. A young man, a man who loves the Lord, loves his family, a hard worker, and now in the capacity of pastor at Bethel Temple Apostolic, Denby Crawl. Praise the Lord Jesus. Brothers and sisters, it is my pleasure to invite to this lectern to share a word, a word from the Lord at this time, none other than Pastor Ferron McLean. <laughs> Will you put your hands together for the man of God in Jesus' name? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Can you just lift your hands and give God praise in the house? Can you just tell God something right now? Come on, be grateful to him. Hallelujah. There must be something you want to thank him for. There must be something you want to praise him for. Come on, go ahead and just love the Lord with a praise. Go ahead and just love him. Come on, go ahead. Amen. I'm giving you that chance to just go ahead and love the Lord with a praise love him with a praise hallelujah he's worthy tonight he is the reason why we are here come on just love him with a praise love him with a praise Lord we honor you tonight we glorify you we lift up we adore you there is none like unto you somebody just love him with a praise right now Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lift them up with a praise, somebody. He's worthy to be praised tonight. Had it not been for the Lord on our side. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Then the enemy would have swallowed us up. Come on, love him with another praise. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let me take time out to honor the Spirit of God. 
head of my life, head of the church, praise God. Put your hands together for the Lord tonight. Amen. I want to salute our bishop and his wife, Bishop Dawkins and his wife. God bless you, sir and ma'am. Reverend Dawkins and wife, God bless you, sir and ma'am. Praise God. To all the other bishops and pastors, lovely choirs, God bless you, musicians, saints of the most high God. Those visiting with us, those online, please accept greetings in Jesus Christ's name. I want to also extend greetings on behalf of our bishop and wife, Bishop Webb, Minister Webb, praise God, Overseer Graham and Bailey, and the entire body of the Bethel Temple Apostolic Church. Please accept holy greetings as well. It is so good for me to be in the house of God tonight. Are you happy to be here tonight? Are you happy to be in the house of God tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah! Praise God. The saints that are with me tonight, my daughter and the saints from Bethel Temple Apostolic, then be crawl. God bless you. So good to have you worshiping with me tonight. Praise God. I am truly honored to be standing here in the presence of Almighty God. And I am expecting a word tonight. Anybody expecting a word? Anybody came for a word? Praise God. Hallelujah. God has been extremely good to us and we are so grateful. Amen. That whenever time we get into the presence of God. Amen. As the prophet says, when I think back on the goodness of Jesus, all it needs is just a reflection to begin to praise God. Because some of the time we might think that we are not blessed the way we ought to. But when you think back on those in the hospital, those walking on the street, eating from the garbage bin, oh hallelujah. Just the fact that you're alive tonight and in your right mind. When you were getting ready since night, no one assisted you to the bathroom. Come on somebody, lift your hand and get God glory. <laughs> hallelujah. Here's a praise in my spirit. Are you ready for worship tonight? Hallelujah, somebody. Praise God, praise God. Could you quickly turn your Bibles, amen, to the book of 1 Kings chapter 19, and we're going to read verse 15, 16 and 17. Hallelujah. Could you stand for the reading of the word of God? 1 Kings chapter 19. Let's do 15, 16, and 17. When you find it, say amen. 1 Kings chapter 19, praise God. Amen. And we're going to read from verse 15. 16 and 17 and it says and the Lord said unto him go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus and when thou comest anoint Aaziel to be king over Syria and Jehu the son of Nimshi shall thou anoint to be king over Israel and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Meloha shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. 17. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Ahaziel shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Let's turn to this, the theme scripture over to Second Kings. Amen. Chapter 2. Praise God. And it's the first night, so we want to read the scripture, amen, in its entirety. Praise God, hallelujah. So 2 Kings chapter 2, amen, reading from 9 through to 15. Let's read together. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elisha said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee. 
before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I be taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and it parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And he also took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted either and thither. And Elisha went over. 15. And when the sons of the prophets which were the view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah thus rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bow themselves to the ground before him. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your words, God. They are already anointed. Lord God, let your servant, hallelujah, be decreased and you increase. Let self be slain tonight and let your spirit take over. Let this word be a blessing unto us tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward by. the chorus again. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on it. Is there a lifted hands in the house tonight? Is there a lifted hands in the house tonight? Is there a lifted hands in the house tonight? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated for those who are standing. Strengthened for the journey. 
Saints of God, we are all on a journey. The moment you accept the Lord God as your personal Savior, you have started that journey. And in order to make that journey to the end, you're going to need all the strength that you can. Somebody give God a praise. The word of God declares that the race is not for the swift. Neither the battle for the strong. But it is that endure it unto the end. The same shall be saved. Somebody give God a praise. And so since it is the first night. Let's go back into history a little. And so we want to understand church that God is sovereign. That's the first thing we need to understand about God. God does not share his glory with another. And so from in Exodus God tells us that I am a jealous God. He said my glory you shall not share with another. He said, there shall have, you shall have no other God beside me, for I am a jealous God. He would have given instructions to the children of Israel when he, when he looked in the book of Deuteronomy. He says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. He said, tell it to your children. Hallelujah. So that, amen, the tradition can continue from generation to generation that his people must not serve any other God. And when you choose to turn your attention from the true and living God to another God, it is called idolatry. And that is something that God hates, praise ye the Lord. And so, praise God, as children of God, if we are distracted uh, by any other thing that Amen. Take our mind or our focus from God. It becomes idolatry. Amen. Your job can take up your time. Your car can take up your time. Your possessions can take up your time where you spend more time to these things. Amen. Than you spend to God. And it becomes idolatry. And that's a serious place to find yourself with God. Can I tell you that God has chosen the children of Israel to represent him on earth. To be an example to the other nations. Praise ye the Lord somebody. And so Israel should be a model nation to live that holy life. That set apart life. Amen. So that the other nation, the Gentile nations can see the life they are living and come to glorify God. Praise ye the Lord somebody. But Israel, amen, God promised them a land. God took them out of bondage in Egypt. And God said, I will be with you along the way. And so God kept his word, amen. And by day he was with them as a pillow of cloud. And by night he was with them, amen, as a pillow of fire. Touch your neighbor and say, God is with you. Amen. Sometimes you can't feel like he's there, but I want to assure you tonight that God is right there with you. I want, us, I want somebody to feel assured tonight. He said, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you. Somebody give him praise. And so he said to Israel, oh, the children of Israel, when you go over into the land of Canaan, he said, you shall not marry to their daughters. Amen. Neither should your son be given to them, nor your daughter be given to them. You must stick to your own tribe. Look at your neighbor and say, stick to your own. Don't mix it. God said, be ye separated. Touch not the unclean thing. Be separate. Amen, somebody. And so Israel went over into Canaan and God said, when you get over there, drive them out. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Can I tell you the land, amen, was uh, given to Israel, but people were living there. And Israel had got to drive them out in order to take possession of what God promised them. Somebody give him praise. 
Understand that when they get over into the land, they did not drive them all out. They began to intermarry and that pose a serious challenge for the children of Israel because what it did is that these people did not serve the true and living God and so when they intermarry the worship began to mix amen and they started to introduce the Baal worship to the children of God somebody give him glory in the house and so, amen, the worship began to water down because the Canaanites are introducing the worship of Baal to the children of God. And we have got to be careful, people of God, because Satan will do his best and find every loophole to infiltrate the church and to infiltrate true worship. Somebody give God glory in the house. Understand children of God that amen when they settled in the land they had several kings that rose up and was leading the children of Israel and majority of them turned away from God. Somebody give God glory. A nation that God was preserving and God brought them through the wilderness, took them over the Red Sea and had them as a model nation. When they get over there, they begun to mix. Oh, glory be to God. And the worship of idols started to infiltrate the children of Israel. And the different kings that were coming up started to do evil in the sight of God. We are getting to strengthened for the journey. And amen, one evil king after another. One evil king after another. Until it reached down to King Ahab. And Ahab decided that I'm going to show you guys that the evil that you are doing is nothing. I'm going to show you how oh, people do evil. And Ahab, the Bible said, had done more evil than all the other kings that were before him. And can I tell you, when Ahab got out of control, God said, it's time that I do something. And it was then that God rose up a man called Elijah. Somebody give God glory. God will not always sit down and watch you interrupt, interfere. And watch the devil interrupt and interfere his plan. Somebody give God glory. God is going to raise up an Elijah to stand up against a Ahab. Somebody give God glory. Is there somebody in the house with the spirit of Elijah who is ready to stand up for God? Stand up for holiness. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for true worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. So God said to Elijah, go and talk to Ahab. Let Ahab know that there is a true and living God. Amen somebody. So the God that they were declaring is called Baal. And Baal according to the Israelites, to the Canaanites, he was in charge of the weather. He was in charge of rain. So God said, since your God, according to you, is in charge of rain, I'm going to show you that I am suffering and I supersede your little God. So God said to Elijah, go to Ahab and tell Ahab, according to your word, there shall not be rain or dew for three and a half years. Somebody give God praise in the house. So God was showing his prowess. Since you say Baal response for rain, me I go make Jod come. Somebody give God glory. Somebody give God glory. And God was using the situation to teach, amen, the idolatrous a lesson. God was even disciplining Israel because God said you should not turn to idol worship. So he caused drought to be on the land. And in the midst of the drought, they were looking towards dear God to bring rain. Somebody give him glory.
But Elijah said, according to my word, there shall not be rain nor dew for these years. Somebody praise God in this house. Amen, somebody. And Elijah said, enough is enough. I'm going to keep a little gathering. And today we're going to prove which God is God. The God that answers by fire. Since you say your God sends rain, I want you to call all your prophets. And they call all the prophets of Baal. Elijah says, set up your altar. Amen. And we are going to prove today it is time for the church to stand up for Jesus and prove who your God is. Somebody lift your hand and give God a praise. Look at your neighbor and say, prove your God. I need somebody to prove their God tonight. I need somebody to prove their God tonight. I don't know what situation you are dealing with, but I want you to lift your feet and say, God can't do it. It cannot be done. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the doctor says. Whose report will you believe? I declare it. Let God arise. Elijah said, bring them out. Bring them out. Because we're going to prove this day which God is the true and living God. He says the God that answers by fire. Let him be God. So they set up all the altar. And you know the story, most of you. And amen. The prophets of Baal were jumping and calling on Baal. Calling on Baal. Calling on their God. But there were no sound. Elijah began to mock them. Elijah said, you need to call a little louder, sir. And I guess they were calling a little louder. Elijah continued to mock them. Elijah says, maybe he's gone on a journey. Or maybe he's taking a nap. So they decided to turn up their type of worship. They began to cut themselves. They began to offer blood sacrifice. But their God was still asleep. We serve a God that never sleep. Do you know the God I'm talking about tonight? We serve a God that never sleep. Never slumber. He hears when you call on him. He said this poor man cry. And the Lord heard him. And deliver him. Look at your neighbor. Say call on your God. Whatever you are going through. Call on him. I feel somebody calling him. I feel somebody calling him. Yabo Shatai. You have cancer, call him. You have diabetes, call him. If you're lonely, call him. Whatever your needs are tonight, can somebody open up your mouth? <laughs> sit down a little, sit down, sit down. Sit down a little, please. Elijah said, it's my time. You've been wasting too much time calling on your God. And nothing is happening. Elijah said, it's my time. Elijah said, repair the altar because I want to do it fresh. Hallelujah. God just dropped a word in my spirit. I don't want the Baal worship. I'm not continuing with the Baal worship. He said, repair the altar. Tell somebody, repair your altar. Repair it, repair it. Repair it, repair it. Because we are start afresh. We're not building on Baal's foundation. We're not building on Baal's foundation. Repair your worship. Repair your shout. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the worship have been changed. Look at your name and say, repair. Sit down, please. So the Bible says, Elijah repaired the altar. And he gave a command, he says, put the wood together, put on the sacrifice. And should in case you think may I work any trick, get some waters. When you do deeper studies, they tell you that the false prophet would have gone underground to set up some strange fire. Hallelujah. But Elijah said, wet it up. And when they thought it was wet, the man of God said, wet it again. And when that was a wet enough bishop, the man of God said, wait it again. Come on, tell somebody, wake up your prayers. There's a fire that is coming tonight. Come on, tell somebody, wake up. Wake up your prayers. I've got to preach it. Sit down. I've got to preach it. The long and short of the story. Elijah called on God. Elijah said, show these people. You have some people we are talking against you. Somebody need to say, God, show these people. I don't know what the enemy is doing to you. But somebody need to say, God, show these people that I am your servant. Sit down. I, I want to teach this part. Sit down. Hallelujah. Mosa. There is a power in this house tonight. I feel somebody coming out. Because God is going to show your neighbor. God is going to show your co-worker. You keep saying to yourself, I don't know what to do them. But God is about, God is about, God is about to show somebody. God is about to show somebody that you are a servant. Don't you trouble Zion. Hallelujah. Fire fell from heaven. Burn up the sacrifice. Praise God. And when that happened, Elijah says, I'm going to get rid of you all. I'm going to get rid of you all. Church said, weed them out. Church said, weed them out. If you have some bad tree in your garden, and you take your machete and brush off it up, With the amount of rain where we have a fall now. They're going to grow back. But in order to kill the crop. In order to kill the lineage. You 
I've got to weed them out. Elijah said, I'm going to weed out the Baal prophets. I'm going to get rid of them. Elijah said, get out of them. Come on, are you ready to weed out every demons and devils that has been plaguing your family, plaguing your marriage, plaguing your worship, plaguing your mind. Come on, say, weed them out. I feel God in here. Sit down, please. I need to teach this part. Elijah called the prophets of Baal 450 and slew them. When I saw that, I was like, wow. And Elijah heard about another 400 that ate at Jezebel's stable. And Elijah sent for them and slew them. But that's where trouble began. Hallelujah. Because Bali, Bali, Ahab. Anybody that knows the Ahab, Bali, Bali. As much as in Guan like him, big and bad. In Bali, Bali. Anybody remember when he saw Nabat's vineyard? He go home like cry, cry, baby. The ball to his wife. Somebody praise God in this house. So Bali, Bali, Heab went home and said to Jezebel, Did you know that your that Elijah the Tishbite slew all of our prophets? Jezebel said, What? You mad? Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah. Teach me a teacher part, you know. Said tomorrow, this time, I'm going to make you like one of my prophets that you kill. And the great Elijah Why the church not shouting no? Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're with me. The great Elijah bolt run away. I'm going to say something now. You might not in agree be in agreement, but I'm going to say it anyhow. Sometimes some of us Book up on some situation where we have a run to the man that fights and run away, lives to fight another day. Sometimes you might run, but running doesn't mean that you are defeated. Somebody give God glory in this house. You lick me down, but I bounce right back. Cause I'm a hard man Tell your neighbor bounce back You may run for a while But come on somebody Touch your neighbor Say bounce back I feel like telling Facebook bounce back I feel like telling my sister bounce back Lord you have run for a while but it's time bounce back listen 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 Elijah called down fire from heaven Elijah prayed and heaven shut up Elijah through his ministry return Israel to God Elijah ran or outran Hayab's chariot hallelujah somebody Elijah heard the voice of God and talked to God directly but yet I feel like telling somebody don't be discouraged 
All of who want laugh, make them laugh. If Elijah run, me can run too. But I serve a God that wherever me run to, he's there. He's there. If you make your bed in hell, Elijah ran and hid himself in a cave. So let me jump over the woman at Zarephath. Let me jump over the, the brook. And let me go right to the cave because I want to bring in the message. Hallelujah, somebody. He ran and hid himself. He hid himself in a cave. Somebody praise God. And right in the cave, God went in there to him. The Bible said there was a mighty wind. Oh, glory be to God. When everyone thought that God was this wind, it's not in, it was not in the wind. Tell your neighbor, God is not in the wind. God is not in the wind. The place began to shake. A mighty earthquake. But God was not in the earthquake. But when he listened, he heard a still small voice. Tell your neighbor, listen for the voice. Because his voice makes a difference. Have you ever been going through a situation and you heard his voice? His voice makes a difference. When he speaks, he releases my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear that makes a difference. Glory be to God. And listen what the voice says. Get up and go. Elijah says, I am alone. They have killed all the prophets of Israel. And I am left alone. And they want to do the same thing to me. God said, no worry yourself. You are not alone. Encourage your neighbor. Say you are not alone, man. Ay, ay, ay. So many times in our walk with God, we feel like we are alone. Tell your neighbor you're not alone. Come on, talk to them radical. Say, cheer up. What you doing in the cave? What you doing in the cave? You're not alone. God say I have 7,000 more. We have some real people in a Pentecost. That even when it gets hard, we now bow. Somebody praise God. Like the three Hebrew boys says, we care not king to answer you in this matter. For even if God don't deliver, I ain't going to bow. Look at your neighbor say we now bow. This is where I want to land the plane tonight. Get up. You have a job to do, Elijah. What are you doing in the cave? I want to call out Elijah out of the cave tonight. You have some Elijahs that are anointed. But because of a particular circumstance or whatever reason you are hiding in the cave, God said, come out. Big preacher now preach again. Big singer now sing again. Katu Sire. Prophetess now prophesy. Come out. We are doing I cave. Come out, I cave, man. Your work not done yet. God said, Come out, Elijah. I'm going to send you to anoint three people. He said, I want you to get out of this cave. And I'm sending you, praise God, to Jehaziel. 
Praise the Lord somebody. Praise the Lord somebody. And I want you to anoint him king over Syria. I want you to go to Jehu. And I want you to anoint him king over Israel. And I want you to find a young man called Elisha. Glory be to God. And I want you to anoint him to take your place. Wow. <laughs> you hear what God said? I want you to find Elisha and anoint him to take your place. Hallelujah. You have run. You have run the race. Elijah wasn't daunted any at all. Listen, God sent him first to Ahazel, second to Jehu. But guess what? The first one he found was Elisha. If you read it, the first one he found was Elisha. And Elisha was in the field plowing. We tell people all the while, say, God no call lazy people. God no call idlers. So all of whom bishop I say, I'm too busy. I don't have any time, you know. Are you God want? Every one of the disciples that God called, they were occupied. All of them were fishermen. Matthew was working when he sat at the gate collecting tax. So God no call I glass. So don't tell me you're too busy. Me too busy. I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm taken up with my job. I don't think I can. The devil is a liar. You God want. Yeah. And everybody that God called drop their work and come. Yeah. When the man of God saw Elisha. He didn't have to call him. All he did, he just threw his mantle. Somebody give God glory. Come on, bring that mantle. Bring that mantle. All he did, he just threw his mantle. Come on, give oh glory, glory, glory. All he did, he just threw his mantle. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what, church? Elijah did not say to Elisha, God is calling you. He never said that. All he did, he just threw the mantle. And when he threw the mantle, that was a symbolic sign to say, God is calling you for ministry. I don't know who the mantle is going to touch tonight, but God is calling you for ministry. God is calling you for ministry. Busy, 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 Elisha. Left everything. So why you can't leave? Why you tell it? God say you too. You know how much I know God call? You find all type of excuse. I love your testimony to the unsaved tonight. You know how many of you God is speaking to? Say, so come unto me. All ye that are labored and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Some people now want to come. Elisha dropped 12 yoke of oxen. Run behind the man of God. But him said, Sir, just give me a little time. If you go kiss mama and papa and tell them, say, May I move? Somebody need to walk out. <laughs> Goodbye, world. <laughs> I'm talking to an unseen right now. I stay no longer with you. We are not only here to shout, but we are here to minister to a lost soul. Goodbye, pledges. I'm talking to a backslider now. Hey!
Lord, I stay no longer with you. I make up my mind to go God's way. Whether they're on the outside or the inside, the rest of my life, I feel a backslider coming home tonight. I made up my mind. Elisha, God, I call you. Elisha, God is calling. Sister Elisha, God is calling you. Elisha dropped everything. Elisha ran back home, kissed mama and papa. Slaughtered two of the cow them and kept one big feast and feed everybody. And went into ministry. Without even thinking or second guessing. Drop everything. What is it you're holding on to? Look from when God will call you. You know much people want to hear the call of God and can't hear it. Yeah. Y'all get dreams and vision and a play around. Yeah. Elisha, God is calling you. So the man of God drop everything and follow the great prophet. And the Bible said in following, in obedience, tell your neighbor, be obedient to the call of God. Everybody taught somebody and said be obedient. So we must get the message to the backslider and the unsafe. Yeah, man. Be obedient to the call. And when he called him, he followed and he obeyed and he served. And served well. Praise God. And it came a time when you didn't hear nothing more about Elisha. And Elijah challenged Ahab and challenge Jezebel. Praise God. Prophesied against them. Said, dog, I'm going to lick it to our no blood. Praise the Lord. And it did happen. Be careful how you fight against the church. You want to me another message. Be careful how you fight against the church. Be careful how you fight against God's people. Dog will lick your blood. And when that happened, chapter, book one was over. And here we have book two, second Kings. We saw where Elijah, Elijah he felt now that it was time. And the young man was following him and he says, Elisha, we, we are at Gilgal, but I've got to go down to Bethel. God said, I must go down to Bethel. Stay here. And Elisha said, as the Lord live it. And as thy soul live it. I will not turn from following after you. This was a test to Elisha to see his commitment to the work. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. And as he would have it, ah, 50 prophets, sons of the prophets were there. And they said, ah, Elisha, don't you know that God is about to take your master away from you? Distraction. He says, hold your peace. Sometimes when the devil brings some distraction at us, we need to speak prophetically. You just all of a sudden, you just feel one bad feeling. Just look on it and say, hold your peace. All of a sudden, one Negative text just come in on your phone and you can't worship again. Just, just say, hold your peace, man. Because something is about to happen. 
And I don't want to lose out on it. And the man of God followed Elijah down to Bethel. From Bethel, the man of God says, I've got to go down to Jericho. Stay here. He said, as God live and as thy soul live, sir, I will not turn back from following you. They reached to Bethel, they reached to Jericho. And say, you know what, I'm going to Jordan. Because God sent me down to Jordan. Stay here. Church of God, when you see something good in God, go after it. Don't be discouraged and give up along the way. Paul says, covet good gifts. Oh, glory be to God. Nothing is wrong if your leader is a good leader and you want to be like your leader. Nothing is wrong with that. Somebody give God glory in a man. Somebody give God glory in a man. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. As the Lord live it. And as thy soul live it. I will not turn back from following after you. Oh glory be to God. Hallelujah somebody. The man of God reached Jordan and he, he took out the mantle. Because he knew that they had to cross over. It's a beautiful thing God revealed to Elijah. How and when he's going to take him up. Some of us are going to go and we don't have the slightest clue of when. But Elijah was so privileged to know his time. Somebody give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he struck the Jordan. And Jordan parted in two. And they both went over. And dry ground. Somebody give him praise. And while they were over there. While they were over there. Praise God. The man of God says. I'm about to go. And I want you to ask what you will. Oh glory be to God. Do you have a desire in your heart tonight church? Church do you have a desire? What is it that you have been thinking about of late? What is it that occupies your mind of late? God is searching through this congregation right now. He said, ask what you will. And it shall be yours. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. People of God, when you go ask God for something, make sure you make up your mind good. Elisha could have asked for riches. Hallelujah. Elisha could have asked for power and, you know, might and fame. But he said, sir, I need a double portion of your spirit. Oh God, I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it because Elisha would have been around Elijah and saw his way of living. Hallelujah. So he said, I need a double portion of your spirit. The man of God said, wow, you have asked a hard thing. But if you see me when I go, look at your neighbor and say, stay focused. You have some people from them coming at church, then there's a whisper in your ears. And I tell you who dressed in our, who we were last week, and who a chat and choir. Who are your peace and focus? <laughs> Hallelujah. You have some people that want to tell you things till you sit down in a church. God Almighty. Hallelujah, somebody. If you see me when I go, in order for you to receive what God has in store for you, you have got to remain focused. Some of us are not focused. Some of us are not focused. Our minds are all over the place. But let this mind be in you. Come on, put your hand on your head and say, He anointed my head with oil. My cup run it over. Let the peace of God be in your mind. In the name of Jesus, if you see me, Ah, 
And the Bible says, immediately, Akosatai. As he says that, hallelujah, chariots of fire and of horses came down and split them asunder. Elisha cried out, my father, my father, we have seen, I have seen the chariot of Israel. But when he looked, a whirlwind swept up the man of God. But something happened, Bishop. The mantle was left. Elijah, come on, church. Come on, come on. Work with me, church. Elijah does not need the mantle in heaven, sir. Anybody remember what he threw on Elijah? The same mantle that he threw on Elisha is the same mantle that was left behind. Come on, look at the church. Elisha could have chosen not to touch the mantle. But Elisha said, I got to go back across Jordan and I'm going to need some strength. Come on, tell somebody. Pick up! journey strengthened for the journey ask your neighbor where your mantle there Lord God you gonna need your mantle look at your neighbor tell your neighbor you gonna need Bishop, the mantle was left behind because the work continues. Bishop, Elijah was going away, but the work continues. What he asked for a double portion of Elijah's spirit. This is what God showed me, Reverend. God showed me that even though. Ahab was dead. Even though Jezebel was dead, their spirits are still alive. Now that Elijah is dead, we need a double of Elijah's spirit. Because right now we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. So Elijah recognized, I'm going to need a double portion of Elijah's spirit to kill out every spirit of Jezebel. I tell you church that right now the spirit of Hayab is roaming the earth can I tell you church that right now the spirit of Jezebel is roaming the earth but when you have your mantle Elijah was commissioned to wipe out idol worship don't it and look what God tell Elijah to tell Elisha. Anybody miss the sword of Jehazel? Jehu will wipe them out. Anybody escape the sword of Jehu? Elisha will wipe them out. So Elisha had a mandate to wipe out Baal worship out of Israel. Come on, somebody. You are commissioned to stand up for true worship. But 
you're going to need strength for the journey. You're going to need strength for the journey. Elisha took up the mantle. He reached back Jordan. And he looked at Jordan. Listen to this. He did not say, where is my God? Because at that time, Bishop, he did not develop a good relationship with God yet. But he knew the God of Elijah. Where is the God? Are you facing any trouble now, saints? Is there any Jordan blocking your destiny? Is there any Jordan overflowing your territory? I wish somebody could stand up on their feet. Take out your mantle. Because we are going across. And we have the strength. I am now strengthened for the journey. And I am going back across. Oh God Almighty. But Jordan is in the way. Come on, somebody take out your mantle. The little temptation where you used to get me down. God Almighty. The little tears where you used to get me down. I make me feel discouraged. Me have me man, sir. And I am no strengthened. Come on, somebody, look for your Jordan. I said, you are all me back. Get up! destiny come on somebody look for your Jordan and say when Elijah was here he and I cross over but a me and God know where is the God of Elijah I am no strengthened I'm through strengthened for the journey Elijah, your time now. Elijah, your time now. Mama, 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 mama. I call sister Elijah. I call brother Elijah. A your time now. Elijah gone. Don't give up. Don't pack up your bag. Take up your mantle. Kutu Baba Sate Katu Sai Kutu Yabahaya I was weak and burdened down, but I realized that since I took up the mantle, I found strength. I am now strengthened. Come on, tell yourself. Touch yourself and say, I am now strengthened. I heard one of our ministers testified and said, The demons, then where our grandparents used to deal with, we have some more serious demons now. I love the older folks. And I am getting there because you can see the gray hairs in my beard. This man, I'm kind of. But the temptations that we have now, greater than what they used to deal with. First time, they never have no whole heap television. Then they have no internet or no tablet. They influence their minds. 
and now we are dealing with them there. And I worry about demons that come through them in our children. First time, Pitney used to be obedient in a whole time days. No, you can't talk to them one year. We need a double portion to deal with them. Touch yourself and say, I'm strengthened. Before I came here tonight, I was feeling so weak, but now I took up the mantle in the Holy Ghost. I heard when David says, I feel like I could run through a troop. Anybody feel that weird tonight? You were cast down, burdened down, feeling this way. But since I took up the mantle under the Holy Ghost, I feel like I could run through a troop. I feel like I could leap over a wall. I'm going to leap over my enemies because I am no strength. I'm opening the altar. I'm finished preaching. Somebody are in the house. You're not safe. Come, Elisha. Come. God is calling you. You're in the house. You're a backslider. You're an Elisha. Come. God is calling you to ministry. Every unsaved, I'm inviting you. I'm not commanding you. I am inviting you. You're in this house and you're not saved. I'm, I'm inviting you to the altar. I want to rest the mantle upon you tonight. If you're in the house, you're a backslider. Come, come. God is calling you, Elisha. Calling you back to ministry. Italabahaya. There's no one saved in the house. If you're on the outside, you're an unsaved, you're a backslider, come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why God, I give you something, are you afraid to come for it? Why God, I give you something, are you afraid to come for it? Why God, I give you something, are you afraid to come for it? You're in the house, you're not saved. Come to God. You're in the house and you're saved, but you're feeling weak. Feeling like you can't make it. Don't you feel discouraged? Come, let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Don't be afraid. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood. Was shed for me, and that thou singing I rest the mantle of God upon your life right now whatever is happening in your life that you are so concerned about I speak strength in your spirit for the journey I speak strength you were bold enough to walk from the choir stand and come to the altar I speak strength into your situation right now because there's a journey that you must finish I speak strength into you I speak strength into your spirit right now 
God said you can make it. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it. Hallelujah. Is there anything too hard for God? Nothing is too hard for Him to do. I rest the mantle of God upon your life. Sweet anointing. Healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's all stand tonight. 
I'm going to ask all the church to just walk down to this altar. We're about to close the service. All the saints, could you come back to this altar, please? Hallelujah. Let's all come to this altar tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says the sons of Ezekiel, they discern the times and the season. I'm not sure if the church understands what's happening right now. I'm not sure if the church understands what's happening right now. All those were sitting down, are you saved? Are you born again Christians? Could you just stand? Let's all just come down to the altar area. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This word tonight, a very powerful word. Many people right now in Israel would want to trade places with us tonight. Do you know that? Do you understand what's taking place on the Middle East right now? Right this very second we're standing here. You don't know that. You don't understand what is happening in this time of our existence. The word of God says when you see these things, we should look up. The war between Russia and Ukraine is not as important or impacting to the church as the war now with Israel and Gaza and the Hamas people and Pakistan. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, the church is asleep. The church is asleep. This word came to strengthen the people of God. Can we take advantage tonight? Everyone lift your hands right where you are. Lift your hands right where you are. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Your children stand in this house, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift your hands and begin to... You know what? Can you hold your neighbor by the hand right now? We're going to pray for the strength of our neighbor. Our brothers and our sisters, hallelujah. The church is not having the kind of impact on the world that we ought to. We get excited over good preaching. But when the preaching is finished, we're back to where we started. We get excited over good singing and when we move and shake. When that is finished, we're back to the same old, same old. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Standing at the last trump. Who will be standing at the last trump? Jesus. It, it scare me, Bishop. If a trumpet sound in a service, a Sunday morning, a convention, it, it scare me as so to who will go up. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to stand to the song, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining, strength for the journey every day, still praying I'm on the word of Lord, Lord, plant my feet on a high ground. My faith has no desire. Where doubts arise and fear dismay, a song may dwell, Lord, where these A 
so singing now. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith unveiled when Satan Let my feet on higher. The sing it one more time. Say, Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up. And, and let me say my fate on him.
We're gonna pray for a neighbor. We're gonna pray for a neighbor this evening. We're gonna pray the strength. We're gonna pray for strength. How many need strength tonight? How many need strength for the journey? How many need strength for the journey? You pray for me, I pray for you. How many need strength for the journey? I can't make it by myself. I need you to pray for me. And I'm going to pray for you because we must make it in. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I must make it in. Open your mouth and begin to pray for your neighbor right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. We stand in your presence tonight, Lord. My brother, my sister, let's all pray together. My brother, my sister, Lord, I hold a hand tonight. And Lord, I pray for the strength of my neighbor. I pray for the strength of my brother and my sister, Lord Jesus. You will bring us into this house, Lord, to hear your words. To remind of the God of Elijah and the God of Elisha. Hallelujah. God, you have demonstrated your power through them. And they overcame relying and depending on the faith that you placed upon them lord and the confidence that you are sovereign hallelujah and tonight god we want to say in the name of jesus the god who brought them through you're gonna bring us through hallelujah no weapons that form against your church against your people is gonna prosper and so we come against every struggle that your people are faced with even now some are hidden lord some even don't even realize that they are going through hard times some have become habitual sinners in the name of jesus but right now god we ask you to strengthen your people right now oh god we have allowed the lust of the flesh eyes and pride of life to take over our body to control our focus god to shift our attention from you but god we come before you lord and we repent before you jesus we repent before you tonight and we ask you god to empower your people lord god empower us lord we want to make heaven our home we recognize that the forces of darkness it is invading the space and so many christians are becoming weary hallelujah are becoming lukewarm have no energy spirit of lethargy has taken over the church but tonight god we ask you to rekindle the passion and the fire in the name of jesus in your church among the believers let god arise every enemy be scattered and so we thank you for this word tonight that has come to empower the church help us god to take heed and to apply and to rely upon you because you are our help in present our present help in times of trouble holy ghost breathe upon us right now breathe upon us right now and strengthen the body of christ help us god to do all we can to ensure that we make heaven our home we bless you lord and we honor your great name we give you all the praise tonight we give you all the glory tonight continue to use your servants those who are part of this church and those who came from different assemblies continue to establish them lord to put that passion in their heart for ministry and for those whom you have called but they have not responded to your calling i pray god that you will ignite that passion and that desire in their heart so they will yield themselves and put themselves in position to be used by you we give you praise tonight we honor you tonight and we thank you tonight in jesus name lift your voices and say in jesus name come on church lift your voice and say in jesus name we declare strength in this house we declare strength in this house i speak life in this house hallelujah the moral conquerors in this house we give you all the glory we give you all the glory clap your hands for the victory somebody come on Cup your hands for the victory. Cup your hands for strength. Cup your hands for strength. I receive strength in Jesus' name. I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. I'm gonna make heaven my home in Jesus' name. 
God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the name. Praise the name of the Lord. The ground, the ground is saturated. The foundation is set. We have heard the word of God tonight. We have seen the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And we believe that God has more in store for us for the remainder of this holy convocation. On behalf of Reverend Dawkins and the Bethany family, we thank God for you that came out tonight to let this service be what it is. Your support means a lot to us. And we're looking forward to see you for the rest of this convocation. We have some great speakers that will be coming in right up until Sunday night. Amen. And we pray that you will continue to give us your support. In Jesus' name. All of those who, who took the time out to be here tonight, I love you with the love of the Lord. Can we stand? Right after they, we pronounce the doxology, uh, we have refreshment available for you. Amen. Uh, do we have to go upstairs? Okay. All right, good. All right, the instruction already been given to our visiting choirs. Amen. And so, just going to pronounce the doxology now in Jesus' name. Now, by the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, divine comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. In Jesus Christ's name, God bless you, brothers and sisters. Looking forward to see you tomorrow. And we want to start at 6.30. We got off late tonight, and we promise that we will be much earlier as of tomorrow night. In Jesus' name. <laughs>